Good afternoon. Um, so I appreciate everybody being here uh, this afternoon. Uh, I, I was told that I probably need to make a joke. Uh, I, I remember one of my college professors, Dr. Tollerson, he always used to say, now folks, there are still some A seats left up here at the beginning of the class. So yeah, haha, uh -huh. that was funny for Dr. Tollerson, right? Um, I want to thank you all for being here. Now, for those of you who are a little bit confused as to why I'm up here speaking to you, you're probably looking for the after lunch nap session hall. That's down the hall to my left. Uh, so no shame if you're in the wrong area and you want to get up and go move to the, to the napping quarters. I will probably be heading there after my talk myself. Um, my name is Joey Barkley. I am a senior SE with Okta. Uh, I also am a lecturer in computer science and cybersecurity with Freed Hardeman University in Henderson, Tennessee. For those of you who are wondering where Henderson, Tennessee is, fly to Memphis, head east. When you're in the middle of nowhere, it's on the left. All right. So. Uh, uh, they, they just basically let me shape young minds, which should scare all of you. The United States government uh, has a, I guess we can say that they have started down a multi-year journey to modernize their IT systems. Now, realistically, modernization of IT, in my opinion, is an ongoing activity. It's something that we are never going to achieve. It's something that we should always be doing because as soon as we implement something, it's already starting to get old and the next round of technology is coming up behind it to replace it, right? So we need to be focusing on that as a continuous process that occurs and not something that just stops and suddenly we're quote unquote there. Um, as a result of this, I believe that every agency strives to do their best uh, in order to modernize these systems, to improve their security, um, but it, it's challenging, right? It's very, very difficult, not only for government agencies, but for commercial entities as well, uh, to be able to make those changes in a way that's going to be impactful for the Americans that are going to be affected by those changes. But I've got good news and I'm here today to present that good news to you that Okta can help with that and we're going to be focusing today on how Okta can help with an identity strategy. Now the um, average American is, is experiencing government in multiple touch points. All right, now I phrase that the way that I intended to. It sounds kind of weird, but but we all sitting in this room have some type of interaction with the quote unquote government, right? Probably most of us in this room are taxpayers. Um, I, I know that some of us maybe are tax collectors. I, I met a couple of folks over the last couple of days from the IRS. Uh, we also are probably license holders of our state and local governments. I'm actually a federal license holder. So I have a, a license from the FCC to operate an amateur radio rig. Uh, probably not very impressive to any of you, but I'm sorry, I'm, I'm kind of a nerd. I'm, I'm into that. Y'all saw that I was a solutions engineer, right? That, that's in my title. There are millions of Americans who seek public benefits, right, that, that they need to get to, whether that be unemployment or whether it be disaster relief funding and grants. Uh, all of these individuals have interaction with government applications. And as, as we grow older, we interact with the government differently depending on the stage of our life that we're in, don't we? My mother recently retired from federal service and she now interacts differently with the Social Security Administration, with Medicare in ways that she did not interact with in times past. But that interaction that we have with government agencies is not always easy. Okay, now, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up here and, and be quite frank about the matter because, well, actually, I'm going to be Joey about the matter. Uh, I don't know who Frank is. Uh, perfect. Frank is here. All right. So I'm not going to pretend to be Frank. I'm just going to be Joey because uh, I'm, a, I'm a simple spoken kind of guy. Sometimes the friction that people experience 
in dealing with their interaction with the government, it, it's not necessarily the government's fault, okay? There is a, a level of digital illiteracy that certain people have to deal with. And I don't mean that in a, a negative way. I'm not trying to be derogatory in that term. It's just some people don't know how to get on and operate uh, different applications. Sometimes people don't have the correct equipment in order to interface with the government agencies. Maybe not everybody has a laptop computer. Maybe they only have a smartphone and the application doesn't necessarily work correctly on the smartphone in the same way that it does on a browser on a computer. Now sometimes it is the, the problem of the agency in order to deal with some of these problems that people experience. Maybe the application is too complex for people to understand and, and, and it doesn't really matter what the pain point is. When individuals have pain points, they start to have a poor view of the agency that they're trying to interact with. Hopefully everybody here can agree with that. I'm going to give you a quiz when we're done. No, I'm just kidding. There will be no quiz, no test after we get finished. Now, this erosion of public trust, um, it, it comes because of those pain points that we've just talked about. Um, but I really do believe that the people who work in these agencies their intent is to provide good service to the people that they interact with. I, I know, I, I told you that my mom worked for a government agency. I know that she cared about the farmers that she worked with on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, I'm, I'm sure some of you are sitting there thinking, man, I knew that this guy's accent was from somewhere in upstate New York, but it's not, in fact from upstate New York. Um, I, I grew up in West Tennessee and my mother helped to provide benefits to farmers in West Tennessee in our county. Um, she tried to make sure that they were well taken care of. And I know that those who serve in other agencies have that same level of dedication to the people that they serve, but it sometimes doesn't matter what they want to do. Sometimes it only matters how it's perceived. Now, Executive Order 14058 uh, acknowledges a connection between trust and government service quality. Okay, it, it admits that there is a connection there and how much people trust government agencies versus what they receive and the type of service that they receive from those agencies. It also outlines actions that can be used to improve the end user experience. Um, the goal, and I'm, I'm going to read this, all right, because it's a quote and I don't want to mess it up. The goal is to make government technology work for every American. Now, when these services, when this technology works simply and reliably and securely, agencies can rebuild that trust that maybe in the past has not been there. Um, the executive order sets out ambitious new goals to reduce the quote unquote time tax that Americans experience whenever they're interacting with agencies uh, that have to deal with paperwork and sometimes delays because of staffing problems. You know, the, these are real concerns for agencies, how am I supposed to provide the services to my customers that I need to provide if I can't hire enough people in order to perform the work? Um, IT systems up on the screen here, we've got these eight uh, areas, uh, these eight requirements, I guess we could call them, that, that these systems have to meet. And I'm not going to read them because quite frankly, I'm sure that all of you can read those. Even when I was working in the private sector, uh, not affiliated with any government agency, I, I actually used to work as a contractor for uh, a government agency. Even before I got there, this was a tall order to fill. It, it was difficult to deliver these types of requirements to the people that I was working for in those roles. Um, but experience, user experience, isn't the only concern 
that's addressed in executive orders. Um, 14028, I'm sure everybody is, you know, looking these up and making sure that you read through real quickly, you know, while I'm talking about them. But, but 14028 was actually quite groundbreaking from a cybersecurity standpoint. Now, I, I told you I'm, I'm kind of a nerd, a little, little bit of a geek. Uh, I used to be a cybersecurity engineer, so this executive order was, I, I don't know, I mean, it was almost like reading a novel for me. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm not that big of a geek. But I, I did actually read through it, and there is a lot of great information in there, and it directs agencies to move towards zero trust architectures. Um, it also encourages them to move forward and migrate to cloud services where possible and apply industry best practices. Now, I'm just going to tell you, back, back in my IT days where I was helping the guys and gals operate servers at 3 o'clock in the morning when something shut down, I am glad to say that I believe the days are numbered where we have on-prem data centers that are run by an individual agency for one or two applications and it doesn't scale well because maybe people only need to interact with that application a few times per year. That, that's not a good quote unquote business model and it's not a good service model either. It makes things difficult to maintain and it, it makes you have to deal with all the problems that are associated with hosting that equipment on prem. Now all of the things that we've talked about um, all the factors in order to achieve service excellence for the American people, they're, they're kind of difficult to, to walk through all of this, isn't it? On a day-to-day -day basis, it can be very hard to provide these types of reliable services. You're, you're under pressure from multiple fronts in order to help accomplish these goals. Uh, modernizing these public facing applications, making them easy to use, making them fast and reliable for the end users and securing them from sophisticated threats. And I loved it when I, I worked for the government. I loved it when I was contracting and people would ask me, yeah, but I mean, it's not like you're fending off nation state attackers. <laughs> Well, actually, the government is fending off nation state attackers, right? Literally every single day, multiple times a day in many cases. Um, again, talking about being short staffed in very key areas of expertise, all of this mounts up to what sometimes can be a very discouraging obstacle or set of obstacles in order to provide good service. Today I'm going to focus on one area and that of course is identity because, well, we're in an identity conference and I work for Okta, so what did you expect me to talk about, right? I'm, I'm going to talk about physical trash removal today. No, of course not. We're talking about identity. So every digital interaction with Americans starts with establishing identity. Um, it connects millions of people to thousands of applications. And quite frankly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask a, a question. If you, as an individual, try to log in to an application where you need to get access to the information or, or file a form or submit some type of data or get some type of data back and you can't log in, is that a pleasant experience for you? I went to my hotel room yesterday and I used my digital key. Not going to tell you what hotel I'm staying in. Number one, that'd be kind of weird, right? I don't want anybody showing up at my door later tonight. Hey, you got any of that swag left from the conference? We really want some of your chapstick. But the other reason is I don't want those people to feel bad. I, I got into my room just fine. But then after the mixer was over last night and I tried to get back into my room, I couldn't get logged into the app. And so you know what that meant? That meant that I couldn't even ride the elevator up to my room, to the floor where my room was. I had to go down to the, you know, 
had to be old fashioned and go down and get an actual key card in order to be able to get into my room. It was a little bit frustrating. I mean, not the end of the world, but other people, you can't log in. It may literally be a matter of life and death. And people get very upset when systems go down. It, it's almost like the electricity gets turned off. Identity is critical infrastructure. It needs to always be up and running. It needs to be stable. It needs to be private. Americans need to know that their information is being guarded properly, and it needs to be secure from, from those advanced attackers that we talked about just a moment ago. Now, I'm, again, not going to read uh, to you what's already on the screen. Uh, screen. screen. I'm a real good talker, you know. Man, I, I heard this guy from Memphis. He was incredible. Um, OMB memo, yeah, somebody got that. That was funny. Uh, OMB memo 1917, uh, this is a quote from, from that memo. It underscores all the points that we've made, basically that, that identity is critical infrastructure. It's not something that we should take lightly. But to be quite frank, getting identity right is hard, and, and when I say it's hard, I mean it's really hard. I, I tried to implement an identity solution at one of the corporations that I worked for before, and there is so much that you have to take into account. You have to think about human-centered design. You have to think about how to secure it. Uh, you need to make sure that everything that you're considering is a holistic solution, and any, any Mary Shelley uh, fans in here, uh, any any Frankenstein fans? Yeah, we don't want to make a, an identity Franken app, right? You, you don't want to take a piece from here and a piece from here and a piece from here and a piece from here, and and then they all don't really fit together right. You want your identity solution to be cohesive. You want it to be something that that incorporates all of the things that you need it to incorporate but in a way that's going to make sense to your end users and in a way that's going to be stable and reliable and secure. It needs to just be there when it's needed. Now, serving the American public is the core mission of the government, whether you work for the federal government or whether you work for state and local government, that, that's your mission. Our mission at Okta is identity. That, that's what we do. Um, you probably know us, if you do know Okta, you probably know us from our workforce identity solutions. Uh, we, we offer the ability for your uh, uh, workforce to be able to log in once with multi-factor authentication, protecting those accounts, and then through single sign-on, uh, be able to access all of the applications that you need to use each day. But we also provide solutions for different communities of users like veterans, uh, retirees of the federal government, and millions of Americans as well who don't have, quote unquote, anything to do with the government outside of being a citizen of the United States or a particular state or locality. So remember, at Okta, identity is all that we do. So why would you want to partner with us? I've got a bunch of our services listed up here. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them because I'm 20 minutes in, and you all look like you're fixing to head on out to that sleep room that I was talking about earlier. I was just kidding. By the way, there is no sleep room. We're all in this together at this point. So just hang tight. We're almost done. Universal Directory, uh, that, that's our way for you to take all of your identities from various places and put them under one roof and have one location where you can access them and make use of those identities. You can do transforms on the data and, and do whatever is necessary in order to achieve the goal that you're set out to do. Our multi-factor authentication, uh, adaptive MFA is what we call it within Okta. It gives you the ability to use phishing resistant authenticators like FIDO2, WebAuthn, PIV, those strong factors that can be used. But it also allows you to use less secure but more widely available 
authenticators like push authentication, SMS tokens, that sort of thing. But we have a very powerful policy framework on the back end that lets you uh, give what I like to say is not just a, a binary decision, a, an allow access or deny access. You can actually allow access if certain conditions are met. And if certain conditions are not met, maybe you need to ask for another authenticator, okay? Um, single sign-on we talked about, user management, that's a big one, okay? And, and, and life cycle management, I kind of combine those two. With life cycle management, Okta makes it so that you don't have these stale accounts hanging around for years after somebody has left an organization or after somebody has decided that they no longer need to be a part of the service that's being offered. Access Gateway gives you the ability to integrate in even with your public facing applications that are still hosted on prem. And then API access management, uh, that allows you to protect very sophisticated in house applications. And then we've also got 7,500 application integrations with our OIN, the Okta integration network. But this is what I really want to focus on, okay? Our, our ability to help you implement zero trust. Now, we were joking around earlier, if you come by our booth, which is actually just on the other side of this curtain, so it's not far, I can get you a bag of zero trust before you leave today and you can sprinkle it all over your organization. No, I'm a cybersecurity engineer, y'all. That, that's not how zero trust works, right? Zero trust is a, a way of re-architecting your network access, your application access. And even though it's really, really tiny and I can't read it from here, maybe you can, but that first pillar, it's identity. And, and quite frankly, anybody that tells you that one of the pillars is more important than the other pillars or one of the pillars, well, you don't need to worry about that, they're wrong. You need to focus on all of the pillars and Okta helps you nail down that identity pillar and that pillar feeds and supports all of the other pillars and those other pillars feed and support the identity pillar as well. Uh, Okta is unique in that we are universal. We are, we are vendor neutral. We don't we don't force you to use a particular technology or application. We want you to be able to use the application that's right for you. Uh, we're complete. Uh, we offer a solution for every identity use case, uh, and that includes orchestration and automation. Uh, we're easy to use not only for the end users, but also for the administrators who take care of the Okta system, and we're reliable. Okay, this is, this is really the thing that I want to focus in on right now. We offer a 99.99% uptime SLA, and we have beat that every year for, I believe, the past five years. Uh, maybe more. I got tired of looking after I got to the numbers on the fifth year, so I just quit looking. Um, that's with zero plan maintenance downtime, just to be clear on that. Our SLA does not include uh, downtime for patching. Once again, identity is critical infrastructure and we treat it like that every day. We complement login.gov. Uh, you can integrate login.gov with Okta or if you don't want to, you don't have to use login.gov. Again, it's your choice, so we want to support you in whatever use case you need. Now this is just an example of what it might look like for somebody to log in with Okta. It doesn't necessarily have to be like this, quite frankly. I can set it up to where it's even simpler for an end user to log into Okta, um, but then I wouldn't really have anything to show you, so what would be the point in that, right? Uh, Okta has been FedRAMP authorized since uh, 2017 at the moderate level. We are currently in process for high, um, and we are a industry recognized leader, you know, uh, Forrester, Gartner, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. Sales guys are here with me. They can talk to you. Um, this, you'll see a list of private companies that are up here. The reason that I asked for this slide instead of a list of agencies, you can go on the FedRAMP marketplace and see the 213 agencies that have gotten their ATO for Okta and have listed them there. 
I think that this is also very telling because not only does the federal government trust us, but so many literally household names in the private sector trust us as well. So I wanted to, I wanted to show you that. Please look us up on the FedRAMP Marketplace if you want to see the agencies that have deployed us as well. Um, benefits of partnering with us, I'm not going to make you sit through that. Uh, second to the last slide, folks. We are almost done. You have done so good. I am so happy for all of you to still be awake, except for the two in the back. No, I'm just kidding. Nobody really fell asleep. Um, Okta is modern identity in the cloud for the federal government. That, that's what I want you to take away from this presentation today, okay? And, and not just for the federal government, state and local municipalities as well. We can serve your needs for identity and take the burden off of your agency, especially when you're trying to provide those services for your constituents, your taxpayers, your license holders, whatever the case may be three minutes i finished three minutes early people and we even started like two minutes late so technically i gave you that whole presentation in 25 minutes nobody that knows me is ever going to believe this um, i'm available for questions i know that there's another presentation i think going to be done uh, right after this one but again our booth is just right over here thanks so much for attending today and please come by and talk to us uh, if you have any questions I can even give you a demo.